Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have something very different for you because Pratik and I discovered Magnific AI, which is pretty actually bananas in the machine image world. Uh, we are not affiliated or sponsored by them at all. We just discovered this and decided to nerd out super hard and we recorded it so you guys can follow along with us as we get way too excited about it. Um, yeah, so forgive the audio hiccups. I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> when it comes to recording audio and we had some hiccups. So please forgive the bad audio. I tried my best to fix it uh, and enjoy the next 50-ish minutes of Pratik and I being massive nerds and showing you before and afters with Magnific AI. Yeah, so basically how this was, how this all of this started was you made a post on Facebook and you were like, hey, I want people to you know, like I have questions about Magnific AI. Does anybody know anything? And I was like, actually, I downloaded or downloaded. I got an account, and I was like, you know, I used it in a recent image for some pieces that I was making to make the larger composite. And so I was like, actually, I have been messing around with it, and I can totally show you what's up. And we we're like, okay, this will be super quick, like thirty minutes. And then all of a sudden, three hours later, we're both just like, like our brains are buzzing on max. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was just like, okay, let's let's do this let's talk about this yeah um, yeah so you, i think ahead. you got me really excited because i started to realize what the implications were i feel like we've hit this uh, critical point where things are starting to become so usable and real that if renee took it seriously i knew there was something worth actually considering because with her asset creation is a huge deal like it has to meet the mark her her prints are just blown up so large and the her psds are or psb files are layered so huge that I'm like, if if Renee's taking notice of something that's usable and then can be applied, I want to pay attention because this is not only on the cutting edge, but it feels like how you're able to use this and take it to another level and put it into your work is what I'm interested about. I'm not interested in just like, here's what it could do. I'm more like on the lines of here's what artists can do with it. And if it's good enough for her, then it's, I need to, I need to jump on this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was it was the first time because I mean, up until this point, machine made images have always been good for like inspiration. It's great for blank page syndrome, stuff like that. Yeah. But as far as like, you know, I, I'm not interested in making images in like fully in the machine made world because like to me, it's just boring. Like I like going out and photographing my own pieces, but I'm also really interested in like making images with people because I am one of those extroverts and I like working with people and that's fun for me. Yes. And so I was just like, OK, well, if that's what we're going to do you know, how, like, at what point is the tipping point going to happen where the machine made stuff actually becomes usable for asset creation. And this was the first time where I was just like, oh, shit, like, you know, it's, it's still it's not quite there. But it is right there. It is right yeah. there. And like I said, this is the first time I've actually, like, really used um, some machine made elements, because I mean, basically, for this image, um, I couldn't get the fire permit that I wanted, because we have had no precipitation and like one of the worst fire seasons we've ever had. So the fire marshal was like, hell no. So mm -hmm. anyway, I, I just like browse, like, you know, scoured the internet for the stock images and everything. Like, I, I exhausted every other option. And then I was just like, all right, let's see what happens if I like, spit out the pieces that I need in mid journey. And then I was like, oh, it's not really like good enough, and, like upscale them in topaz and whatever else. And then by a total fluke, working on the image got delayed a week and then that week magnific came out of beta and came out to public and i was like oh i wonder if and so i put the pieces that i needed in there and then upscaled them and i was like oh shit that's crazy like, that's crazy and so and i have it printed right now i'm looking at it 24 by 36 inches and it looks great and i was just like oh shit oh man so it's finally like it's finally starting to tip over and now i'm having this like really big problem in my head of like how do i actually feel about this because ethically i have a lot of i'm very conflicted about it but on the other hand like pandora's box has been open and yeah. this image i actually wouldn't have been able to make until we got a ton of rain and a ton of snow that the fire marshal wouldn't be able to approve this and yeah. like i tried making it with compositing and it just wasn't good enough so interesting um, yeah like it's just like so, you know, I feel like I used a crutch, but at the same time, yeah. the plugin changed yeah. that. So, like, it's... you know, it's crazy. And then, like, I think about it from, like, a retouching standpoint on your end, like, how that, Im what, what the implication is. Because now that we've been playing with it for a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy because, like, for you in your position, like you said, you're conflicted because obviously you know the ramifications. However, when you're put up against a, a point where you're limited to creativity and there's a physical barrier that you cannot overcome 
this comes in handy and really bridges that gap and opens up the possibility of how much further can we see your creativity now because of it. And on my end as a retoucher, obviously our jobs are being changed and shifted. Um, One thing that I notice is that um, more than ever, I'm able to, in other tools, uh, return a lot more pictures faster and have provide cheaper costs to my clients as well. Um, another aspect that was interesting, especially from this point of view, was on the AI side of things, we're seeing these programs and these algorithms come out and provide realistic results where they're trying to almost show us what something looks like without retouching, so to speak. And you're going to see this as we jump into this in a minute. And then on the retouching side, as somebody who works with photographers, I'm typically asked to pull back realism as much as possible, but still look decent and aesthetic. And what I'm noticing is that now people are confused of, is this an AI image? And is this a photograph? And they're going the other ways almost. So this is really important for everyone just to even recognize what is AI, what is not, and start to see where things fall apart, where they're usable, and also identify it. The more exposure we have with these images, the better we can identify and see what's real and what isn't. And that's why people shouldn't bury their head in the sands and they should look at this. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I totally agree with you. Down to the beginning when we first started talking about it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, okay. So I'm going to pop into screen sharing and I'll just, we'll, um, we'll just like basically start like where our night started and then we'll just go from there. And then I, I want it. to see. Since then, like you told me, you know, you're up till six in the morning this morning yeah. <laughs> yeah. playing with it. So I'm super curious where like you went with this as well, um, because it's 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 surprisingly interesting. Yeah. So oh, sure. uh, yeah. All right. Screen share. All right. So this is um, this is an image that I made in or that I made. <laughs> I, that's <laughs> hilarious to me. That <laughs> sentence. <laughs> I basically typed some letters into mid journey and was like, make me something cool. Um, and you know, cause I was like, Oh, I wonder if like, cause I use a lot of like for the big wings, I'm using birds and then I'm also using 3d renders. And so I was yeah. like, all right, mid journey, like spit me out a couple options. And so it's spat this out and this is a, not the current version of mid journey, but it's like, it's okay, but it's actually, it's still not usable for me. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, and there's, so you'll see there's these like sliders here, um, on the side. So you can load your image here and it has to be a certain size. It can't be too big. So in this case, actually almost smaller is better. Yeah. Um, and then you have your magnification, which right now is two times. And then um, we have standard portraits, art illustrations, video game assets, nature and landscape, films and photography, 3D renders, science fiction and horror. Mm-hmm. And so from here, then you're going to type in what the prompt was that you used or, you know, whatever. In this case, you're like a large black gothic wings isolated on a white background. And mm-hmm. then um, the settings here are uh, nature and landscapes, creativity to HDR5 resemblance zero. Because I was just like, I don't know, whatever. Let's just <laughs> see where this goes. Um, and then it spat out this, which is like. What the F? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> and so, yeah. Renee, for the people who have never seen this before and and only know about things like topaz upscalers like how would you decide just you know talk about the differences between the two yeah so i don't know how it's worked for you but for me (laughs) the difference is very it's um this is a reinterpretation it's a re-rendering of the image itself Mm -hmm. so in this case it's um you know it's it's taking the information and giving me a completely different version of it so there are some differences but like the silhouette is very similar you can see here on the edges here like roughly the shape itself stays very much so the same yeah um you know and this is still like it's not completely fully usable for me yet because Mm -hmm. if i was to want if i was wanting to make something photorealistic like these feathers still have a little ways they have a little ways to go but considering the comparison from here which looks like an illustration to here is kind of insane yeah my gosh renee you know what that's an interesting point because your expertise as somebody who always is a perfectionist in the sense of being able to look at something like this and say, hey, for us, like a regular person, they might see this, excuse me, and and realize this is not, uh, they might think it's perfect as it is, but you realize because of your experience in photography and being able to manipulate images, that this still has a little bit of work to go, but we're, it feels like we're almost there, right? Like we're not too far away. It's very, 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 very close. Um, oh and gosh. this is like, and comparing what it started with to this is crazy. 
Yeah. And you can see on the left hand side here, I, I did the same thing to some pink fuzzy, fuzzy feathers and I'll show those <laughs> in a second as well. Cause I was like, okay, this is like a low res version. <laughs> what, you know, like what is what, and the difference is crazy. So, but where this gets really fun for us is uh, <laughs> we tried it with Bella and Bella, I love you and I'm sorry, but also this is like, I did this to my own work too. We did it to my work as well. Um, but where it, it really shines, but also where it gets confusing is, um, in this case here, we have, I basically have a photo of Bella and this is a screenshot of a Facebook yeah. download photo. So it's, it's like as low res as it can possibly get. It's really, really bad quality. Um, but then I ran it through on, let's see, portraits, creativity to HDR5 resemblance minus three. So I did turn down the resemblance to be fair. So I didn't yeah, say make it exactly Bella, right? Because I wanted to see what it would do, what it, like yeah. how it would reinterpret the data. Yeah. And uh, this is <laughs> this is Bella reimagined. This is Bella. She's... She had like a sibling, you know, um, <laughs> or a daughter. Like if you and if you and Bella had kids, and you know your kids grew up. <laughs> This yeah, true. What your daughter could look like, you know. I know. Um, but what's oh fascinating to me, it's crazy. So like, it screws up the eye, which is super normal. That's what machine images do right now. But yeah. the subsurface speckling and like the the little like the hue shifts around the eyes and the sharpness and everything. Like it's it's kind of nuts. Like it doesn't really know what to do with the headdress, mm -hmm. which is that's something that I've noticed a lot. But like, I it's what's crazy to me is how well it renders out eyebrow hair. Yeah, it does a really, really, really good job oh, all the time. My gosh. Um, it's kind of nuts, you know, even here with like the detail in the dress. Oh my gosh, you know, it actually that. starts to make it make sense. It's kind of insane. Mm. It respects um, depth of field too, like the way right. kind of like totally. Goes in and out. Yeah, so this one here, I said we want um, portraits, creativity three, HDR five, resemblance ten, and I don't think I put a prompt in for this. I just left the mm -mm. prompt empty. Yeah. Um, and so it would be really interesting and I'm sure you've experimented with them and we'll get to your side in a second here, but yeah. like, this is, oh you know, gosh. the resemblance as close as possible. Again, it's still a reinterpretation. It doesn't look like Bella to us, but it definitely yeah. looks like her daughter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's, oh my gosh. it's like, just like the detail here on like the, the lip, like That's if you've crazy. over, if you accidentally over retouched your image. <laughs> <laughs> you were like kind of blase about what the person looked like <laughs> yeah and this is such a good base because perhaps let's say that you know maybe you don't want to use all the aspects of it you could take parts of it like the eyebrows and details that are you know you have trouble with um or you can just use this as a base to retouch it down to get to where they were initially so there's a bunch of options you can do with this thinking about this already even though it's yeah. not perfect at all yeah yeah it's crazy because like i mean a little bit of liquify and that people's fix. Right. Totally. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. So I did it to my image as well. Yeah, um, this is where it gets nuts. This is where it gets fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the before image here, and this is like it's literally like I have my watermark on. It's a web image. I downloaded it off my Facebook page again. Yeah. Um, and but this is what it turns it into. So it really changed her look a lot. Um, what's really interesting to me is how it changes oh, wow. the shirt. So it went from lace to this like floral paisley pattern. So this like reimagination is actually quite interesting. It did give her an extra finger. So we're not <laughs> perfect yet, yeah. which is great. Um, it also it's a good gave, sign. It gave her meth teeth. It gave her meth <laughs> teeth like big time. Those teeth are not looking great. Um, and it did not really like keep her, her features, but like the, it's still, it's a reimagination, right? And so with this one, um, it was portraits. Um, sorry. Uh, it was uh, Portraits Creativity 3, HDR 5, Resemblance 0. So it's okay that it changed it because I was like, you know, like, let's just see what it could do with my own artwork. Um, mm. But look what it does to the toes. <laughs> <laughs> is there, oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. There's a, yeah. I like that big toe. I feel like this just adds <laughs> to the art. <laughs> we should just keep it in there. I know. <laughs> but like it did a beautiful job with the leaves like it did a like a beautiful job so it oh, really like, incredible the place where it really shines and like where like again the digital voodoo witchcraft magic that happens on the back end of this that i don't fully understand um it does a really great job with skin and it does a really great job with like nature textures and all that kind of stuff i mean even here with the hair Really keeps you on your toes, huh? <laughs> yeah, yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Making it hard to put a finger on this. Um, <laughs> Sorry to everyone watching. They're just like, oh, we God. had to get it out of there. Yes. 
But no, so this like it's just really interesting how it reimagined this. It is. Now, and it, keep in mind, right? Like it also upscales. So it's not only just adding the detail, but it's doubling the resolution yeah, as well. Yeah, input. exactly. So this is now like a 3000 pixel wide image as opposed mm. to 1500, mm. um, which is that's bananas. That's totally bonkers to me. Um, so where this got like really fun um, when you and I were talking about this. So this is just like this is the, the mid journey render of what was going on. Mm. And then I accidentally, I accidentally left the same prompt in here, which is a girl <laughs> laying on the feather, like on the ground with leaves and all that kind of stuff. So I left those words in yeah. and um, cause I just forgot to change the prompt. And so I left that prompt in, but what it did, oh, was my gosh. In, right? <laughs> like it changes like the middle here to leaves because I'd left leaves in and it put leaves all over the hardwood floor. And like, I was just like, what? <laughs> that flooring and all this everything the details are just it's uh, crazy yeah so like you like because again this is something in mid journey where i was like oh that's really cute but like it's not really usable for me yet unless i like really knock down the detail of the person that i'm compositing right like yeah. it happens. and so now like it's it that that's much closer that's much closer and this is actually yeah. nice, more nicely rendered out than the original like set of feather wings that I did. And I chose feathers for a reason because feathers have such intricate, delicate texture. What I'm curious yeah. and what, what I haven't done yet, um, Patik, was uh, do this with a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, no, I lost it. <laughs> it's like feathers. With oh, watches, watches. So oh, because watches, yes. the watches are one of the last things that like when it comes to photography, we still have to photograph them. We can't render them in 3D yet as mm -hmm. well as they photograph because of all the fine <laughs> details. So I think I'm going to play with that as well. But like even here, like what it's playing with, you know, adding in all these like painted texture backgrounds. Mm, um, my goodness. The details on those textures, like the flooring too is crazy. I just like, you know, trying to figure this out manually would just take a, such a long time. Like I could do it. It would take a long time. Like yeah, I know, I know time. how to do this. Yes. And it would just, it would, it would take a long time for sure. And this is why, Renee, it's still important to learn from you because I think having still that manual control and overriding the outputs is where it makes people stand out. So learning yeah. compositing and, and being able to manipulate textures and see details is still even more than ever, I think, more critically important because of that aspect alone. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And like, you know, what, well, so another thing that's interesting with this, as we'll see on the next image, is remember how I didn't change the prompt? Yeah. I didn't change the prompt. <laughs> and so what's fun here is that because I said leaves, it reinterpreted all of the feathers <laughs> to be leaves. And I was like, oh, how fun yeah. is that? You know, it has leaves that's... all over the floor and everything. But it also said girl. So it changed <laughs> the clavicle to like this, like she's got a broken clavicle now. <laughs> Um, but where it really got fun is here. It tried reinterpreting this as faces. <laughs> it was like, you said girl. You said girl. So I gave you nightmares. I gave you absolute nightmares. <laughs> this is foreshadowing for what it is going to do to humans. I just have a feeling. It's like. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> but I mean, like, like from like a creative standpoint, like this is so fun to have like the feathers turn into leaves. And I'm like, oh, I never thought of that. And that, like for me, creatively, that's kind of fun. You know, you know. Um, it did it did give a leg here where there's like normally fabric, but that's again for a compositor, that's an easy fix. That's like that's nothing to yes, you know, desaturate that and get rid of the knee. That yes. takes no time at all. But like the reimagination of how the fabric here works is really crazy. Yeah. Um, so this time here, I changed the prompt to match what I had typed into Mid Journey, and yeah. it did a beautiful job. And it now all of a sudden these look like feathers, right? Gorgeous. And again. We're still getting a clavicle. We're still getting a thigh because <laughs> this looks like a body to the machine and fair enough because, yeah. but like just how it's handled the floor and oh then comparing the floor from here, because this is leaves. So there's leaves on the floor here. Yeah. So the prompt oh, matters, wow. Right. The prompt totally matters to like what you're typing in. Totally. Um, the overwrite, especially the lower the quality is where it doesn't know yeah. what it is specifically. The yeah. prompts really help it out, nudge it forward. 100%. Yeah, it just helps give it a direction. Um, although oh sometimes gosh. it is fun to do it without it. And then I tried it. I tried it on like some Niji model stuff. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God, it's so cute. Like oh, these little... oh my gosh, the beak. Right? Look at it. And so I like, think you I... pointed this out the beak of the. The beak doesn't quite sit properly. Yeah. <laughs> but like, so for illustrators, I, I, I totally wonder what it's like for illustrators to run their own illustrations through this. 
to be like, you know, what would my work look like, you know, if it was rendered in 3D? And it's still holding to, because this was, I made sure that it was put to 3D. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, what does it look like? And it's super cute. So again, creatively, it's like a fun way to reimagine work that you've already created, whether you use it or not. Like, I also Mm -hmm. feel like as people who like to create images traditionally, Mm -hmm. It's a fun way to reimagine our own work and see things in a slightly different viewpoint. So like, you know how like sometimes people will buy color presets when normally you're used to making them because you just want to see what does this look like in a completely different color palette. And sometimes it actually unlocks something creatively for you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe it doesn't for other people, but it does for me. No, Um, it does. hundred percent. Like I, I, now you've inspired me to want to go back and draw more. Like we talked about this before this podcast where uh, we were like, Hey, I would love to do more pottery. And you were talking about painting and just that feeling you have. I think we need it as creatives regardless. Like it's never going to go away. And this is just giving us the tools to do more faster. (laughs) Like I want to draw things. Oops. Yeah. I stopped sharing. It's okay. Go ahead. Oh, like I want to draw things that make me uh, want to put it in here and then see what it uh, fills in. Because I'm not good at the details, but I have an idea where I want to go. Like the blueprints are there for me. And now if I can have these tools to collaborate with, it's going to make me express my creativity even more than ever before. You know? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm going to scroll up here quickly. I just hit stop sharing because I had a, I rendered a couple images that I probably don't have permission rendered again, using the wrong word, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily have permission to share on this, so uh, blah, 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 screen two. No problem. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, because I knew we had this coming up. <laughs> <laughs> snow palms. I, I had to do a snow palm. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen this yet either. This is new to me. Um, I didn't see this. It's so cute. So this is a Niji snow palm. Oh my god! And gosh. then I ran it in as like extra cute and everything, and like. <laughs> Ridiculous. So I used the prompt that I used, um, films and cr- films and photography, creativity zero, HDR four, resemblance three. Because I was just like, I wonder how realistic it can take something that was a Niji model from Mid Journey, and uh, and then you know what it does, and it's just like, Duh! oh dear, look at the details. This went, this went from, is this a photo? Uh, it went from like, is this a photo? To like, oh, this is a photo, right? <laughs> look yeah. At <laughs> like. <laughs> You've got the no, the snoot, the boops, the snoot yep. is moving. Yeah, exactly. But what's fun is it gave it a nose in the middle of the fur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Santa Claus coming to town. <laughs> and is that a hoof? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a paw. <laughs> you know, so here's the crazy thing, right? Like I see this now with the issues and all. And now I'm not scared anymore because I'm like, wait, now I still have generative fill to just circle and be like, remove the the santa claus nose or yeah. change uh, change a hoof to a a, um, a, paw. a paw yeah right. and so we are using these tools collectively to just bridge the gaps to yeah. to reality here and this is crazy i just yeah. can't i'm not it, ready for it's, this it's <laughs> it's crazy so this one is an american eskimo running through the snow <laughs> a big at sunset. <laughs> yeah it's a big palm <laughs> and again i ran creativity to hdr5 resemblance minus five and film and uh, photography so i was just ooh. like okay let's see where this goes oh my like, gosh <laughs> that's too that's too real but i, it I also, believe it. Oh! <laughs> it turned his son into a puppy <laughs> like <laughs> It was like, you like dogs? I yeah, give you dogs. I, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, it did it like it's like it looked that like is... somebody pushed the HDR slider too far. And it's still, you know, to my eye, this still looks like an AI image. Oh, really? But it is, is way crazy. better than it was. Like this, like the creamy butteriness that we were pointing out. So we, you know, you, you myself, Frederick, Irene, and Bella did a podcast last week, and I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, to watch that, you know, like a lot of the tells that are in this image like they're not here <laughs> they're gone <laughs> you know like there's different ones <clears throat> Back. but like it's way better and again you know like i kept saying like this is just like mm-hmm. this is as bad as it's ever gonna get yeah it's bananas um yeah. and so like we were saying yesterday i was i was painting yesterday <clears throat> and i was like okay i want to figure out a color palette because i was painting a hippocampus Mm. and for people who don't know it's like half horse half fish um mm. and i was like trying to figure out a color palette so i was like i just went to mid journey and i was like colorful hippocampus let's just see what happens and um 
<clears throat> so this is what it spat out for me. And I was like, actually, that's a really nice color palette. And I wound up using most of it. Wow. I was like, oh, this is quite pretty. I did a terrible job. I'm not a good painter. I do it because it's fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I need something to be, you know, like that isn't work related. Yes. That's creative. Yes, yes. But yes. this is what it spat out and it made it look like wood carving. Oh, holy shit. Yeah. And I just <laughs> left it on film and photography, H creati creativity for HDR5 resemblance three. And did you put a prompt in as well, or was it just I did as put the prompt in? I did put the prompt in that it was like a colorful, mm -hmm. uh, colorful hippocampus. And I was just like as basic as it gets. I didn't ask for like detail or anything. It was just like, oh, I'll give you this. And then it just like spat this out, making it look like a wood carving. And I was like, what? That's crazy. And so from there, I was like, all right, let's put resemblance minus six HDR5 creativity for it and left on film and photography. And then it like slightly no different way. again, but it like it looks kind of more like it's made out of clay yeah made out of wood so it changed the material which is so interesting so like if we're swip swiping back and forth here like we really can see like the difference in how this spat out so it's like it, this looks like it's made out of clay the texture you know, like, analysis like the, is phenomenal yeah that's exactly the texture analysis is very 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 good um mm. So this is where I really started to have fun with it because I was like, all right, let's do some faces. <laughs> oh, here's going to be interesting too. <laughs> and faces is where I find it really shines and also where it turns into hot garbage. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> so I did film and photography, creativity for HDR5. So I cranked it and then resemblance too. And uh, it did or dirty. <laughs> Holy cow. It's it's giving something <laughs> yeah so the eyes are totally botched right which is fine um yeah. you know and it's like it's like in a lot of ways it makes her look more like a real person but also like if you crank the hdr and clarity slider on this portrait of this person that's <sighs> kind of what you would get yeah um, it kept the shirt and the necklace pretty similar unlike what it did like it's not exactly the same but it's quite mm. similar yeah um but it didn't change it as much as it did on the girl with the scythe so that was interesting Wow. And then so from here, I was like, all right, let's do film and photography, creativity 10, HDR 0, resemblance negative 8. So I was like, let's push this even further. And I kept the prompt the same of like a girl with orange hair. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> the eyes are still trashed. <laughs> the mouth is a hot mess. She's got like double lips going on here. She's got meth teeth. She's got a little bit of a double nose going on. Um, necklines and everything like, like this is like you look at this and you're like this is AI imagery instantaneously like there's no do the but the before before looks like an AI image too like they they both just look like it, how it's uncanny AI valley is. isn't it it's like yeah yeah it's crazy but I mean like at the same time it still has like you know yeah. see the, the blue here in the corner of the eye yeah. and all that kind of stuff like like things that we normally retouch out um, oh. it's, it's still like... there yeah it's like following a um, a super genius toddler learning to be real, you know? Totally. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. That's exactly right. So this time I switched over to portrait. Creativity uh -huh. 10, HDR 0, resemblance minus 8. And uh, this is where it shines. Ooh, that is beautiful. Say those settings again. <laughs> <laughs> portrait. I ran it through on portrait. So what's in, yeah. like, you know, instantly the hair is like yeah. the biggest, biggest difference. Portrait, creativity 10, HDR 0, resemblance minus 8. Wow. Like, wow. And you're that's just like, a, all right, that's phenomenal. that's crazy. Like the eyes are still janky, but again, mm -hmm. like if you're wanting fixable. to do this, it's like super fixable. Um, it reimagined the shirt very different. It reimagined mm -hmm. the, the necklace, it kind of botched the necklace a little bit. Yeah. But where it really, really shone, I found was like the hair mm -hmm. and the skin. <laughs> you know, it did a a really like more than anything, the hair, it did a really beautiful job on. And I was like, all right, that's that's, that's pretty crazy. freaking good so like yes like you can tell um what in my opinion anyways and again like outsider looking in what most people seem to be rendering with these things because of how good the regeneration is mm. like and like of course we see faces all day long you know we don't we don't see hippocampuses <laughs> every day to be like oh yeah that's what a hippocampus looks like, like no <laughs> what um, i do test us for a living renee yeah. what do you mean? <laughs> But anyway, so it just it just was really interesting and like how it re-rendered the hair and everything. Um, it did like this like a pretty nice job Ooh, again. Wow. Like Those yeah, flyways. Right? Yeah. And like the little bit of freckles, yeah. like the face line, stuff like that, like crazy. Um, and then this time I changed it to video game assets, creativity ten, HDR two resemblance minus eight. And it broke. 
<laughs> it totally blew up. It didn't know what the hell was going on. It just like it it drank too much of the party and threw up on itself. And I was like, okay, good. We're still safe to a certain point. Um, but you know, like like it's it's just but you still <laughs> the subsurface speckling on the skin and everything, like it's it's because the HDR was turned up, like it's yeah. it's still a mess, but like <laughs> It's kind of nuts, though. Still, it is still nuts. It's like, like family still parts of it. Yeah, like there's there's still parts of it where it's just like what? Um, this one was just like a kid at a mosh pit, and I was like, oh well, that's like whatever. Who cares? Um, wow. like still wow. did a really nice job, <gasps> but, you know. This and this was, is just a portrait, the exact same portraits. Creativity two, HDR two, resemblance minus five. And this was on the podcast we had did. Yeah. And the funny thing was the tails we had for it are slowly diminishing. Like I remember making a exactly. comment about the tongue and not yeah. even fix, start fixing the tongue. Yeah. Oh yeah, my gosh. Exactly. And like the teeth are better. Yeah. Like, like it's missing does. teeth here, but I mean like people do are missing their back teeth sometimes. Yeah. So like that yeah, could yeah. be real. Right. So yeah. Like how it rendered out like the, the jacket here, the pleather jacket. Oh my gosh. So the like, reflections. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, it's so funny. We just did this podcast a week ago, and it's like already, if I had had this a week later, yeah, like and- how many, I would, like, I think the things that would give it away from me are still the eyelashes a little bit. And like, this is the AI expression, you know, that mm-hmm. like AI does, machine, the machine images do right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but so where this gets a little bit more fun for me is I ran some Niji wings through different settings. Um, and it did like an interesting job with these. It didn't turn these photorealistic like the other ones, because like mm-hmm. I said, they're just like, you know, and I'm trying like video game assets, nature photography, things like that. So these, it did like, you know, mm-hmm. it just made them look like more detailed illustrations. Yeah. Um, which is, is interesting, but ultimately useless for me. Mm. Um, hold on, where's my mouse? Different so, styles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So from here, I was like, nature and landscapes, creativity for HDR five resemblance minus five. Yeah. And I was like, let's just see what happens. Um, and it spat out this. And I was Holy like, Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and this is large, large, dark pink feather fantasy wings isolated on a clean white background. And I was just like, you know, it like it blows up a little bit down here where like the textures start to kind of like mesh together and stuff like that. And again, that's very common with these mm-hmm. AI images. Um, is it doesn't have good boundaries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pushing the boundaries. <laughs> yeah, it's pushing the Always. boundaries. But it still did like a pretty good job. And again, it's, this is like two HDR for me. Um, yeah. So I ran it through again in film and photography. Creativity zero, HDR zero, resemblance minus eight. And it did a much more delicate job. Much Kept more that delicate. depth. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's very subtle. And it's very gentle. So this is like getting hit in the face with a hammer. Yeah. With HDR. Like this is the kind of stuff that we used to make fun of other photographers for doing. <laughs> this is this is a lot closer to like something that's actually useful. Mm-hmm. You know, like, 100%. like I couldn't make this, at least for my own standard of work, I couldn't make this the front and center piece, but it's definitely close. It's definitely close. Um, yes. And then this one here, it started like this and brought it over. And this did a, beautiful job wow this so are you actually finding the nicest one it did so far are you finding going forward you're gonna stick to something like this where you keep the hdr on, on zero and then yeah. just tweak it yeah. okay yeah um and then like play around with the resemblance probably at least for asset creation yeah. creativity closer to zero hdr zero and then play with the resemblance one slider or the other yeah um but like it this one of all of them was like the nicest one that i had the result on and i was just like oh damn um, you know, and it just takes a little bit of like messing around with. And I could take this from here, pop it into Topaz, mm. get it bigger if I want, if like 3000 pixels isn't enough. <laughs> and because I know you can upscale again in Magnific, but also do I need more detail? Do I need it more like re-rendered again? Right. Mm-hmm. Or do I just need it bigger? Um, mm. So that's going to take like a little bit of playing around with. Um, but all in all, like it's kind of bananas. Oh my gosh, this was so illuminating because not only do we get to see exactly how you did it, but some of the differences between the settings that you used and also what what each category did for you. And I found that fascinating, even on the, the drawings of how changing from you know one to the other, change the shading values and everything, because these categories, although 
uh, descriptive enough don't really illustrate exactly what they do unless you visually see them. So this was really great. And I'm so happy I got to see see this uh, personally from you. Incredible. I'm so, I'm so excited to see what you did, though. I'm super stoked because like, yeah, you and I went down the rabbit hole like so hard and so fast. It was just like, Wah. yeah. Totally. Um, so I like, yeah, let's like, I want to see what you got because I, I know like yours it... are going to be more face. Your, yours are going to be more face oriented because that's what you work with. And so yeah. that's what I'm like. Like, okay, yes. so what can, what does this tool do in the hands of critique? Okay, let me, let me rearrange myself here to get it on the big screen. And so we can take a look. Um, but yeah, I think what's fascinating is, as you said, you know, we're, we're doing it from two different angles and the bigger difference is when you download it and then see it on your computer and stuff, you get to really, really see everything. Okay. So let me yeah. jump into it. I'm going to uh, screen share. Mm -hmm. We're very excited. I think we all definitely had a a two day long course. <laughs> so let me hide my bookmark bars is clean. So my, our friend um, in our group uh, posted. Trigger warning. Some people are afraid of clowns. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Let me zoom past clown situation. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. You're here. Okay. We're here. Okay. Yeah, We've good. already scared them. It's fine. They're scared. awake now. <laughs> Boom. So Brent uh, posted this in uh, our futurist group. And what he did was he actually already upscaled this in a stable diffusion upscaler. So he had rendered it really fast using a new model, stable diffusion XL, which renders out things in real time, but in low res. So you can start typing it. It pumps out stuff immediately. You can see it right away so you can get done faster. And then they use an upscaler to render the results better uh sorry i'm misusing the words render again too my bad <laughs> and this is the word we're going to use today yeah and so he put it in the group and i was like hey i'm curious if i could run it through magnific and he was like sure go ahead so i did and this is the result we got <laughs> yeah like like it's it's kind of nuts like it did give him fingers on the forehead which is hilarious that was hilarious yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy you mentioned that, but it was going that direction. You see the little knuckles yeah. here initially. Yeah. So yeah. it said, "Hey, I'm going to bridge the gap for you and really fill it in." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's fun, still fun, fun times. <laughs> uh, the yeah. the thing for me was the skin. It felt uh, terrifying. This was terrifying. <laughs> Let's uh, and the extra but, mouth lips here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. I didn't even notice those. You're right. And there's like a tongue on the right hand side. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So we're, thank God the machine isn't perfect yet, but damn, it's getting there. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, moving yeah. past, mm -hmm. <laughs> this was another one that I <clears throat> have been playing with a lot was uh, portraits naturally to see how well it did details. And my settings for this one were film and photography, uh, creativity three. Uh, resemblance it's not showing me let me resemblance see. uh just like yeah uh, it's cutting off let's see oh bit. minus one yeah <clears throat> minus one so resemblance was minus one. Oh, it is cutting off in full screen so i'll bring it in just a little bit so we can yeah. all see the little details here and all of that oh that's why because i'm zoomed in let me zoom out again there we go, there go. that's much better Automatic resemblance minus one HDR one. And I noticed the HDR <laughs> slider, as you've seen with Renee, is actually quite sensitive, where if I push it beyond zero, <laughs> it really adds a lot of unnecessary detail sometimes. Um, it is a lot. Yeah, it is very heavy handed. <laughs> yeah. What I but, liked about this was like the lips was really interesting. And this is, to be fair, not the best example. Let me zoom into a better one. But like the detail on the clothes. Yeah. Oh, just. Yeah. Like that's what that's what that fabric looks and feels like yeah you know yes. um yes. you know even though like it has you know it still has trouble because it's stable diffusion it has trouble with or so that's an ai or is it stable diffusion um, or, uh, this one mid is a uh, mid, uh, mid journey yeah so mid journey really struggles with patterns but what's really yeah. fascinating to me is the reinterpretation of the patterns by magnific yeah. um you know like it's it is doing a better job of making it look like something that actually could be made in <laughs> real time as opposed to what Midjourney says, which is just like, I don't know, a necklace looks like um, yeah, yeah. Oh, which is one of the tells that we were looking at with the with the podcast last week with Frederick is that, you yes. know, the jewelry and, and like patterns in the clothes it really struggles with. And Magnific is definitely making that uncanny valley a little bit shallower. Yeah, it's a it's 
taking the deep end for sure and really rising yeah. up there. And the yeah. funny thing is, like, it makes up a watermark. It's not actually somebody's watermark, but it know it thinks that oh, if it's a photo, it should have a watermark. So it adds in random letters, Weird. not magnific, but mid journey. It adds yeah. in random letters because it is learning from. I'm assuming people with watermarked stuff, or at least yeah. looks at stuff, saying, hey. You know, that's what a watermark should look like. And it does that. And then Magnifique with lettering, what it does is it tries to decipher. Here's the goop. Here's what letters it should be. It's still not perfect, but it starts. Still not, still not a word either. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. It's so, so interesting. Because yeah, I mean, there's like even like Russian Cyrillic letters in there. Um, this one was the best, I think. I use 3D renders. Yeah. Uh, uh, quality three, resemblance minus two. Uh, it is the same thing for me as you. It adds the buck teeth in there, that meth yeah. teeth. Yeah, so the I meth teeth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with teeth. You can't spell meth without AI, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turns out you can, though. But, uh... Uh... <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're right. I... I'm, the thing that is a tell now is the not the lack of um, symmetry, but yeah. I think uh, as that improves over time, as the base, the base um, ren the base creation becomes much more uh, symmetrical and reliable, then the uh, yeah. analyzers will too. But this was great. You can see here the the detail in in a bridal sari comes through, and I think the interesting thing is the embroidered patterning, right? Yeah. Like we really it gave actually this starts to work. make sense. It yeah. actually starts to make sense. Yeah, because that's something that's closer to what a person could actually stitch. Absolutely. So let's keep yeah. on going here. This is where it went too far, I think, the, the 3D render, um, yeah. Creativity 3. So I strayed away from it. You could see the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holy poor is Batman. <laughs> <laughs> this reminded me uh, of school because in school, we used to have those cheese slices with the plastic wrapping. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and it peeled off. <laughs> Yeah. So we went from orange skin to uh, uh, American cheese slice skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, again, like with the skills that you have, that's a retouch, you know. Exactly, but the necklace yeah. again is where it all starts to blow up. Um, mm -hmm. I love, I love the styling that you chose for these because this is the stuff that the the machines have the hardest time mm -hmm. spitting out. Mm -hmm. Is like patterns that make sense. Um, Good call. Good call. Yeah. So yeah, no, those are really, really, really great choices. Yeah, this one was also, I put this to standard mode. Standard mm -hmm. mode was definitely the most um, run of the mill for sure. Uh, yeah. If you're not sure where to start, it actually worked okay. As long as, like Renee said, don't bump up the HDR too much, yeah. uh, you'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's yeah. go to some other ones that failed. Uh, portraits I did. Um, portraits had the, more of that textural issue again. So I noticed yeah. one thing is if you're using Midjourney 5.1 and if Midjourney 5.1 is outputting any images that has any um, repeating patterns on the texture, then Magnifique will elaborate that uh, even further. So for the purpose of using Magnifique, if you're looking for portraits, I would also consider bumping down to, uh, I'm sorry, 5.2 did that. So bump down to 5.1 or 5.0. Um, even though it's low res, the output for Magnifique will be better uh, oh, for skin texture. That's interesting, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> so that was my one of my finds I found fun. As you can see, I went obsessed with this. Here's uh, yeah. one thing that went too far. <laughs> Because I tried to break it just like you. I was like, where yeah. does this fail? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like they're, like those features are more like a real person, yeah. even though it's like it's too far. Yeah. Um, like that is more, you're more likely to run into a person in the wild that looks like this mm -hmm. minus the HDR slider than the other one. Yes, you know? yes. So um, I think uh, if you did HDR zero again, I'm going to stick to that or one. Yeah. And then bump it up there. Yeah. But look at the details though. The details yeah. is where it just went nuts. Yeah. Oh, look at the ab muscles, though. It kind of blew up on the ab muscles. Check that out. <laughs> yeah. It's like... We've got, like, some muscle distension and, like, I don't really know what's going on, but... It was like humans like a, a humans like a detail? We'll give yeah. them detail on this case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, even though the abs do not make yeah. them. <laughs> uh, one really quick tip. If you bring the resemblance down to minus two, it will uh, take its own judgment to decide what it wants to do with details. Uh, yeah. You saw that Ernest thing too. This is getting a bit closer. I put the yeah. creativity on this one to three instead of seven. Um, yeah. And so it's stuck to more of the originality of the fabric embroidery. Yeah. And the HDR is down at one. Ooh, I'm super curious to see what this next one looks like. Oh, uh, so, okay. As a preface, let me actually go to the original. This was a Magnifique 
rolled two times. So I intentionally decided to, the before is an actual upscale from Magnifique already. Yeah. yeah. And then the after was it done twice. Oh, so interesting. Was, what would happen if we do yeah. twice roll? And so you can see here that it, uh, Renee, what do you notice? Like for me, the lashes was the big thing, like the eye. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say the eyelashes was a big one for sure. I mean, this looks like an image that was shot at F1.0 because the eyelashes are sharp and the pupils are not. Yeah. Um, but yet it's like the depth of field in this one, the depth of field doesn't quite hold up. And I mm. think that comes from the mid-journey export yeah. itself, the original file. But like the, how it handled the like the color changes on the lip um, mm -hmm. is really, really, really interesting to me. Um, and the one thing I noticed is that Magnifix seems to add freckles to everyone, which is odd. <laughs> Like everyone yeah. loves freckles. Everyone gets freckles. Um, she's got good teeth. That's a nice change. Um, yeah. There's a lot of time that it kind of blows up teeth. But this is the second time already through, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm super curious to see what the first one looks like. Let's do it. It's probably somewhere down there, but we'll resume okay. that train of thought in a second. This yeah, was yeah. one of my favorites. So I, I decided to do this series where uh, I reimagine um, fine artists as uh, fashion designers. Oh, and... interesting. Is this like yeah. a Klimt? It is. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And, Fuck yeah! Uh, <laughs> well, humans are right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and they did a really good job. So I was happy about this one. The details yeah. again was the one that came through for me. Yeah. No, it it actually it's really nice because like the original one is is fun, but you're just like, yeah, it's, it's an MJ mm -hmm. image, and like, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, man, what it did to that dress. Look like, at the reflections here. The stuff I'm the most interested in with all this stuff is how how the AI images Im, Im, or sorry influence yes. real world art. So like mm -hmm. how like is a fashion designer going to make a dress based mm -hmm. off of a mid journey export? I mean, um, Firefly Path I think is one of them. She started yeah. making dresses that's based right. off of mid journey exports, and they're beautiful. And I was just like, God damn, that's <sighs> so awesome. And that's where I'm just like, that's where the superpower is coming from with mm -hmm. the machine made images is that it is remixing our world mm -hmm. and uh you know and like it is impl it is changing the real world art that people are making and that's really fun for me i love that i'm just going through a lot because i did actually quite a bit of randomness I did this till six in the morning whoa go to the other side yeah. of this one. What? look at this one look so at those beads this one was from mid journey <laughs> um 3.0 so i was starting oh. to say what would happen if you know we do take these older mid journey versions yeah. that we love that we couldn't do again yeah in the new one and oh, this is wow. perfect for it so go back start saving your old ones purposely use previous mid-journey engines or stable diffusion models and then use that as a basis because like because these different models have their own art style my favorite was still 3.0 the 100%. one where it just three three was the most interesting like three for me do you know Bixinsk uh Bixinsky? um yes. the artist uh yeah so everything that version three came out with looked like all of a sudden I was seeing his artwork everywhere. And I was just like, this is amazing. Like, this is so interesting to me because yes. like that guy thought in the way, thought the way the machine did before the machine. Mm. And that's just like, so fascinating to me. That's so fun. Oh my God, you did not. <laughs> this one was a, a Niji palm. So oh, it wasn't a, a photo. You palm. also it was... did a Niji palm. <laughs> Yeah, but I you didn't like, get a nose in the fur like I did. But wait, I have a surprise for you, Renee. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so this is one. Oh my god, okay, look at cute. the toes. But wait, 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 wait. This oh. one, this yeah. one was film and photography, creativity five, resemblance two, versus this one being film photography, creative zero, resemblance eight. So you keep that in mind. I chained the resembly resemblance. Now watch what happens, okay? Oh my god, look at the feet. <laughs> Nightmare yeah exactly what i wanted you know like something that could oh. wear shoes but also be cute so <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine that walking on you at night being like, Hi, like oh little, gross there's little like tiny toddler feet attached to like a, oh. a baby like a palm <laughs> and it's like clammy from all the dirt in the house and just like crawling on your face with oh, like water no. puddles <laughs> oh no okay we're not okay there. <laughs> <laughs> yes you did cats and clothes i was so hoping you would Cats and yeah, so it, it it shined in both aspects. Yeah, that's it does a really nice job. Wow, I mean, right? like comparatively, that's... that's one thing I should have done. Oh man, I have so many cats and clothes. 
Oh, you're, I'm excited to see what that looks like now. But yeah, look at the, look, look at the. the... <laughs> not quite, not quite. We got like a, we've got a, a Yorkie paw on one side and a what? sort of, and like there's a nose. What is it with noses being in fur? There's a nose Wait, where? on the arm. Oh shit, look at the face. It's, <laughs> yeah. a, it's a whole animal. <laughs> there's a baboon or something. I don't know, something from Nightmares. Oh man, I love this. It's See, just an now, endless gift. That's the kind of thing that if someone had painted in real life and just hid little tiny nightmares in the artwork, that would be amazing. Bernie, I, I love doing this with you because like your observations. Oh, on look this at the together. teeth. There's teeth on ah! the belt. <laughs> Why are there teeth on the belt? <laughs> Ooh, now I want to go back into mid journey and be like flesh nightmares and then oh, put this God. in here. <laughs> just make sure you make sure you cover everything in strawberry jam because you can't use blood, but you can say it's covered in strawberry jam, and that's how you get like but oh, magnifique can use blood <laughs> it's true it's true <laughs> oh here i did uh changing the plot <laughs> clearly adhd <laughs> it's like let's do interiors the most beautiful places that we can imagine and then it gave the you candles. leeches it gave yeah. you leeches. Gave leeches what the hell is that about <laughs> like here's your bloody apartment where you committed murders of leeches yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like romantically murder. Because and the candles so to hide the smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> and, the, and the dirty, and the who has a towel like this that's that fluffy? It looks like a blanket in the water. That creeped me out more yeah. than the... Yeah, no, the if you see that, if you go over to somebody's house and they have a towel that fluffy that's draped <laughs> into the pool, into like the bathtub, you just leave. Just leave. Like, just leave. <laughs> that's when you know there's something demonic. <laughs> how did they, that's how they afforded this apartment to begin with. Like how yeah. did they... <laughs> The extortion the, extortion and the lack of fear of candles on wood oh my god yeah right yeah no that's a whole lot of sus a whole lot of sus <laughs> that's how you spot the ai images guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah Ooh, wow no. look at the eyebrow hair yeah. this one is where i was like whoa stood up you know film and photography yeah. 2x yeah. renee you're right hdr zero we're coming to the same conclusions here yeah. HDR zero, creativity five, resemblance five. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we're getting somewhere. Oh man, I even gave her little mustache hairs. Did it <laughs> <Yeah>. dirty. <laughs> Didn't all dirty. Look at this. Yeah. It's right. Being racist, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I got a I got a pretty sweet mustache. So like I, I empathize with this girl, poor thing. Oh wait, wait till you see this other one we did. It it oh, whitewashed man. a face. I was excited to show you this. <laughs> oh no, no, it so. did not. So but yeah, still, like, jewelry, yeah, how, yeah like how it does the eye and the, the eyebrow hair is the one that surprises me the most is just yeah. like what yeah that's, yeah. that's pretty cool it. like it even adds in the hairs that like we would normally remove with like plucking or mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. with like retouching yeah 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 for sure so, I, like I, if, so like here's the thing like if you're wanting to learn retouching but you don't for whatever yes. reason have access yes. to images that are before images you can export some in mid journey and put them in here and you can teach yourself retouching i'm excited to put out these like ugly ass assets just like and you can say the thing the worst things because they're not even the real person you can it's just not, like it's not a real person exactly yeah it's not yeah. even a realistic texture but like tr practice on this behemoth of a thing and just go at it because you just never know yeah. like how good your skills are going to get from playing with some stuff that doesn't even exist yeah yeah exactly like this one. <laughs> yeah yeah wow yeah the mustache hair is a bit rough but like also like, like, is she 20 still... or is she a, a 10, 10 pack a day smoker? Like, what's Yeah, happening? exactly. Yeah, just a chronic drinker. <laughs> yeah, life is life is hard. She's part of the liver destroyer club. Oh, wow. That's a really nice export, though, what you have there. Creativity mm. to H. Yeah, so like the more neutral, the closer you want it to reality, the more neutral it seems to be, obviously, the better. Yeah, and actually, to your point, Renee, I was trying to, for some of them put prompts, some of them put not prompts, and if you're just specifically only, if you like everything else, just upscaling and adding the detail, like, keeping it blank, I think, did it, but for your purposes, like, adding that, like, you know, let's do uh, feathers instead of leaves and stuff like that, totally changed the game for me. Like, totally that was changed very it. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that was super interesting, and, like, how it changes with inanimate objects, that it changed the feathers into leaves, and I was like, Oh, yeah. hey, look at that. Or like it changed the, the flowers into nightmare faces. <laughs> this but you one was like, interesting. Like yeah. HDR2 on portraits really stopped that global contrast from coming in, but totally. it pronounced all the fake quote unquote AI features. So I think this portrait mode and HDR is good for low really res good. photos. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 
really, really nice. That's beautiful. And then oh, I did the, you did some Niji. Yeah, yeah, I did some. Let's see, like art and illustration would work out well. Um, because yeah. I was curious from your perspective before we talked today, I was like, would would you know art styles? Uh, impact based on these methods and I did notice that like these yeah. uh, you know base drawings I did art and illustration for this one creativity yeah. too I liked it a lot I thought it was a nice you know kept that artistic painterly vibe going on um this one in comparison was film and photography so film and oh, photography interesting yeah what do you think like how do you compare the two if you do yeah so I, I also did something like this as well and I found that the film and photography one did the nicest job because I tried I tried 3D renders I tried art and illustration and then I also did the film and photography like or so I, I did the nature that's what I tried uh -huh. um and it did a beautiful job um mm -hmm. and so yeah what's interesting is just like the reinterpretation of the data and like the the export that it changes it out to you know this yeah. is this is definitely like more blocky a little bit mm -hmm. more like you know vector art if you were really yeah. determined to do vector art this detailed which most people are not <laughs> but there are people out there who are um yes. you know you can see like where the table breaks and stuff like that but that's like we know that's all normal like some of the yeah. chairs don't make sense but yeah. it's the ex it's the export styles that are so interesting yeah huh. there we go amazing yeah, let me, yeah let me see a couple more and then we, yeah. oh this one was fun so oh, back wow. in the journey um, that looks like four that looks like four and look at the flowers, right? Because if it does good on nature jobs, adding nature as a fashion element and yeah. then boosting it is ridiculous. Like, yeah, I couldn't. I this one, I just, I, I cried a little bit. <laughs> that's that's probably the best one yet, and it yeah. didn't blow up on the flowers. Like I tried some with flowers before, and the flowers, the reinterpretation of the flowers, just like melted down. It did not understand what was going on. But in this <laughs> one, it did a really nice job. Wow. Yeah, so I wanted to end on a little high note here and show you guys a little uh, difference with you know adding nature and portraits together and uh, just yeah, yeah. So that's there crazy. We go. Huh. Let me stop my share real quick. Yeah, no, like mind kind of blown and like to think that like this is still like again the most basic version that we're gonna get. It's just only going to get better. Is just like wild yeah. to me you know everyone's always saying like oh how can it get better how can it get better and i'm like well it's, there's still room for it to grow 100 percent, and it's, it's going to and um, that's so why we, you have people like renee like looking at this and really putting her opinion listen to it because it, it really is important to to well, see where this is going it's the same with yourself like you know like we know that the the way out of this is education and information yeah. so like as much that we can put out there with people to just be like look you don't have to be afraid of this technology. You can be intimidated by it. You can be concerned by it. You can be in love with it, but you still need to, you need to understand what the technology is as best you can so that you can make informed decisions about what's yes. going on forward. Yes. Um, yeah. So anyways, yeah. So that's pretty much how I wanted this to go. So thanks everyone for watching. If you like check this out, cause I think this was a, this is a, a while. <laughs> yes. No, but it was worth it. 100%. I hope so. I hope so. Um, yeah. So, um, I'll put links for Pratik in the comments. If you guys want to follow everywhere, they use that. Um, Pratik Nike. And I'll um, do the same on mine too. For yeah, any... yeah, exactly. So like you know, the socials and everything. Um, follow the places, comments. We love feedback. Definitely give us your opinions on stuff. Like you know, are you using AI like tools or are you not? You know, um, yeah. like are you definitely like are you terrified of it? Like you know, like I said, I've, I'm firmly one foot or the other. Like I'm in both camps. Just like shit, <laughs> but yes. also like holy crap, but also like ah. <laughs> Um, I, I agree. I feel you. I think we're both coming from this from the same perspective, open mindedness, but cautiousness. So we want to hear your opinions as creatives trying to lead this conversation together. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, everyone have yourself a super awesome day and uh, stay educated. You bet. <laughs>